zero. Hello, my Dev Nation friends from everywhere in the world. Thank you for coming to another Tech Talk. Uh, I'm Ansu Anaga. I'll be your host today. And today we have a very special guest because Cedric, uh, the OpenShift developer advocate intern, is going to present some awesomeness about how can you quickly and easily deploy your applications to Kubernetes using ODO version 2.0. So without any further delay, I'd like to point to you, Cedric, the stage is yours. Thank you so much, Edson. I'm very happy to be here. Again, my name is Cedric Clyburn. I'm a OpenShift developer advocate intern here at Red Hat. I came on in the summer of 2020, and I've had the uh, fortunate chance of being here in the fall, and I'm able to um, share with you uh, what I've been discovering with Odeo 2.0 and everything that's been released in the newest version, as well as going over some basic concepts for today. So we're going to talk about cloud native application development on OpenShift. So fortunately, if, if you haven't heard of me, my name is Cedric Clyburn. I've been on the Red Hat Developer Channel doing some get it, getting started videos. Uh, check out my Podman, my Builder, my Tekton videos if you haven't gotten the chance. But I'm super happy to be talking about Odeo 2.0 because for developers like you and me, it's kind of difficult sometimes to get our projects running on a Kubernetes or OpenShift cluster. And ODO is an amazing, it's an iterative and straightforward CLI tool to essentially get uh, our projects up there running, uh, not only on OpenShift, but Kubernetes as this ODO 2.0 release covers um, not only Kubernetes, but things called dev files um, and a lot of other amazing features that I can't wait to get into today on our presentation. But real quick, I want to talk about our agenda for what we're going to be talking about. So we have a quick introduction. I'll give a little bit more information about myself and my background. We'll talk about ODO, uh, a wide overview, but also new features that have came with this 2.0 release that are incredible and they're going to help streamline your process for development. Um, we're going to talk about dev files, which are portable development environments that you can recreate on any of your Kubernetes clusters. We're going to go hands in um, and create a front end with Node.js. Um, it's going to be awesome. Uh, we're going to migrate a sourced image uh, component from Odeo 1.0, and we're going to get that to 2.0. So for any of you developers who have experience with Odeo uh, and have been using it over the past year, um, we're going to talk about how you can upgrade your components to a dev file and uh, be able to use that on any of your Kubernetes clusters. And then finally, we're going to talk about that Minikube compatibility with Kubernetes. So I'll do a Minikube demo just to show that um, we have support for Kubernetes on this 2.0 release, which I think is incredible because people have always been asking us, you know, why can't I get this running on my Kubernetes cluster? Well, now we have it. So um, a great, a great talk we have for you today. And real quick, I want to give uh, some more information about myself. Um, I am a computer science student at NC State University as well as an OpenShift developer advocate intern. Um, I am the coffee intern, even though it's virtually, I can um, send the coffee through Slack um, as an emoji. Uh, my strengths are, yep, right there, Edson has it. Uh, crazy how that works. Um, my strengths academically are uh, through Java, but um, on the side, I love Node.js and JavaScript. So we're going to do a bit of both, a bit of Java and a bit of Node, um, just so this covers uh, most uh, people out there. And then finally, um, I want to talk about real quick, before the summer happened and before I had this internship, I had pretty much no experience with anything Kubernetes related. So no Docker, no Kubernetes, no OpenShift. Um, and at, so my perspective is, uh, is completely fresh in the in the way that my how I think about cloud native development is um, is kind of how most people think about just developing locally. So uh, when we talk about uh, the inner loop of development here in a little bit, I'll be able to give you a different perspective than you're used to on how I think about it and how ODO can help you um, when it comes to that. So. Real quick, some resources uh, for our talk today. If you're looking to install ODO or get some uh, resource, uh, some tutorials on how to use it, please feel free to head to odeo.dev, uh, which is um, essentially the main website for the ODO um, program and project. Uh, from there, you can download your local binary uh, for your operating system. Something unique about ODO is it's a command, uh, it's a client-based uh, 
uh, pr program. So essentially, you're going to download it for your operating system. So for me, it's going to be Mac OS. Um, I can easily install it. But if you're on Linux, you can download the binary for your uh, distribution. And if you're on Windows, we even have support for you. So doesn't matter what operating system that you're on, you're going to be able to use ODO like a pro. Uh, next up, we've got a cheat sheet developed by my mentor, Jason Dobies. Um, and it's going to give you a lot of basic commands um, for getting started with ODO. So uh, uh, essential things like ODO create, ODO catalog list components, all those different things that you're going to be using a lot. So you can feel free to download that PDF. It'll help you a lot when you're getting started. And then finally, we've got a tutorial for you. Um, something uh, called a uh, Catacoda scenario. So what you'll be able to do is actually spin up an OpenShift cluster in your browser, live in your browser, um, instantly, and be able to either follow along with the guided lab that we have, or you can follow along with this demo. Either way, you can get some hands-on experience on using Odeo and kind of see how it works and see all the possibilities that it has. Because uh, being able to use it for the past couple of weeks, I've learned so much and I'm so excited to dive into it and really talk about what Odeo is. So Odeo is a command line tool for uh, creating and deploying applications on Kubernetes without having to understand um, a lot of complex Kubernetes concepts that come with deploying applications. So Odeo allows you to concentrate on development instead of deploying. Um, so you can create deployment configurations, build those configurations, uh, create service routes, which we're going to be using OpenShift for some of our demos today. And you're going to see how easy it is to create those routes um, and other Kubernetes and OpenShift resources um, that, that are all automated essentially with ODO. So it's going to save you a lot of time. It's going to streamline your process and make you more efficient as a developer because at the end of the day, uh, what we want back is time. And ODO kind of gives us that by streamlining a lot of processes that are typically complex for developers. So what I want to talk about is uh, the inner loop of development because when we're uh, going from simply a project to actually deploying our applications, it's very easy on a local machine. You know, you're writing your code in Visual Studio, you're building that, uh, whether it's a Java project with like Maven or something, deploying that, running unit tests and debugging. And you're, you know, you're going uh, around in that loop over and over and over again. Um, but what, uh, what happens when we go from simply like a local machine and local development to cloud native development is you've got so many more processes that make it much more complex. You're, you know, you're building with a Docker file, you're pulling, you're pushing from different repositories. Um, and along the way, along all these steps, if you make one little error, one little typo, one little bug, you've got to restart all of that. So it's a pain and ODO kind of allows you to streamline that process so that if you're going along that, um, you don't have to make all these mistakes and you save time because you're able to deploy so much easier. So it speeds up that inner cycle. And as I said before, it saves you time and that's what we're all about. So features that are new in ODO 2.0. Well, the biggest thing I want to uh, explain today is what a dev file is. So a dev file is a portable YAML file that essentially allows you to um, uh, describe your deployment environment. So this dev file is a portable YAML file um, and you can use it on any of your OpenShift or Kubernetes clusters. It allows you to create a development environment without the need of configuring a new one every time you create a cluster because that can take a lot of time and we don't really uh, want to have to do that if we have the ability to use a dev file. So what we can do um, and what we can describe, describe with this dev file is predefined, um, you know, build and application runtimes, uh, the images, of course. Um, we can create predefined commands to run. So whether you're running a Node project or a Java project, we can uh, include those default commands, very simple. And then projects to initially clone. Um, so what we're going to do here actually is go out of the presentation when we're actually going to create a dev file from scratch and we're going to look at all these different components. Some of these are schema version, um, which is the only property of a dev file which is actually required. We've got metadata for explaining what our dev file is about, starter projects, uh, which will clone from a git repo, um, components, and then finally commands. So commands are what you're going to, uh, they're going to be the bulk of your dev file. And um, they're going to explain uh, different commands that you're going to want to run with your dev file and with your project. So we'll go in and all of this and I'll explain it uh, from a real world perspective with a 
node project. I'm going to switch here quickly from uh, my presentation. And let's go ahead and actually create a dev file from scratch. So I'm going to hop in here in my terminal. Of course, we've got, we're on Mac. Uh, I love my Mac. But <laughs> what we'll do is we'll hop into our documents. And um, let me see. I might have to delete an old folder. Uh, so let's make a new folder called Dev Nation. We love Dev Nation. Dev Nation rocks. Um, and let's go ahead and hop in there. Um, and what we're going to do is run the ODO create command. So that's the basis of ODO. That's where everything starts. That's where you create your components. Um, it's kind of the, the start of everything. So what we'll do is uh, it's going to bring up an interactive menu of different dev file components that we wish to create. And I'll go in in a little bit more detail later on in this presentation of what components we have. But um, dev files um, essentially allow you to run... Uh, Java and Node uh, officially supported uh, and Python, but we also have old sourced image components covering everything from Perl to PHP to .NET, um, a lot of different things. But for right now, we're going to create a dev file uh, using Node.js. So we'll scroll down. It's going to ask us what we wish to name the dev file component. We can go ahead and use the default um, in the namespace that we want the dev file component to be created in. Again, we'll use the default. And it's going to go through a couple different stages of validation. So it's going to check if we have the dev file, if it exists, um, and it's going to pull that from a registry. And this is super important to note because something awesome about dev files is we can customize the registry which we're pulling from. So if you want to add new components, if you want to customize your components, you can simply add or remove registries, um, which is super awesome. But by default, we have this default dev file registry in which we're pulling from. And again, you see it's validated, and it's going to ask us if we want to download a starter project. For right now, since we have nothing to go off of, we're going to do that just so we can get a look at what the dev file looks like. So we've downloaded a starter project um, from this repository, um, and we should have it, hopefully, yep, right in our folder right here. So if you have familiarity with um, JavaScript and Node, you should see some familiarity here. Uh, we've got our server.js, a test folder, some other things. But right here, we can check it out. We've got this awesome little dev file hanging out in our folder. So let's go ahead and take a look with Vim, which is the superior um, text editing software. Um, and we can see uh, a couple components that we just looked at from the presentation. We've got the schema version, which is the only required part of a um, dev file. We've got metadata um, explaining some details and descriptions of what we have. So we've got an alpha for build Docker file and an alpha for deployment manifest, which I'm not gonna go into today, but definitely cool things to take a look at later. We've got a starter project, which we just uh, saw in the terminal. Uh, that's what we cloned from, um, so we can customize that. We've got the components um, of our dev file, so it looks like we're pulling the Node.js image. Um, we've got a memory limit and endpoints. Uh, when we create a, a, a route for our application later on, we're going to be able to see this actually in action. But the biggest part, which I really want to show you, is the um, commands. So this is customizable. Uh, and it's going to be different for every kind of language that you're using. For Node, you see the very familiar npm install, and you see the very familiar npm start here, um, which are going to be used uh, in our development environment. Um, so you've got, uh, of course, debug and test as extra features. But you can see that this portable YAML file, this dev file, um, describes our development environment. And for Node, it has all of the necessary components um, for a node project. And what's awesome is that these dev files can be anything from, say, three lines or 300 lines. It's all up to you on how you want to customize it. But there's so much capability that I think it's really awesome that we have these dev files and we're able to use them. So what we're going to do now that we've talked about dev files is let's actually deploy an application. Let's deploy, say, like a front-end component um, and actually understand how we can use these dev files. So what we're going to do is clear our console, and we're going to create a new folder. Uh, let's build a weather application from a GitHub repository that we already have predefined. Um, and so what we're going to do before we go ahead and do that is list the components that dev files have um, that are offered by dev files. So we'll go ahead and use the catalog of Odo to list the components that we have, um, if I can type properly. <laughs> and so it'll take a second. And we'll see right here, um, here's everything that is covered by dev files. Uh, of course, you see the default dev file registry that we talked about earlier. 
We've got uh, t- multiple types of Java. Of course, we've got Java Quarkus, which we love here at Red Hat. Um, we've got Node.js, which we're about to use here in a second. And we've got some um, OpenShift components, source image components that uh, are still around if you need them. Um, but of course, there's more emphasis on the dev file components just because of how much you can really do with them. So what we'll go ahead and do now is we're going to create a new project with Odeo Project. Um, and so there's some interlapping of OC, the command line tool, and Odeo, um, which is awesome. But it's necessary to know that um, o- Odeo isn't really a, ne- a replacement for OC. It's kind of a supplement um, and allows you to do more with less, which is kind of a weird way to think about it. But it's really helpful when we're trying to deploy applications. So. We'll use Odeo Project Create to create a new project, and let's title it Weather. And it's going to go ahead and create a new project called Weather, and we're going to go into it automatically. Um, what we have here is, so now we're in, um, let's create a new folder, or we already created it, let's hop into it. Um, and so now we've got just an empty folder. So let's, if we didn't have a project already, it's okay, because we can clone uh, this repository in right now, which is a JavaScript uh, weather application that's going to deploy a front end. And so now we have that um, in our folder. So let's go ahead and hop into that. And we see, just like before, um, traditional uh, node components that we're already familiar with. Um, And so now that we have this project and we're in this project right now in our local directory, let's go ahead and create a component configuration using the dev files that we had before. So we'll do Odeo create. Remember, that's the basis of Odeo. And we'll use the component Node.js. So instead of just hitting enter here and using the interactive menu, we can do it all from the command line. And we'll use Node.js, of course. And let's title it uh, (laughs) weather, if I can type properly. So what this is going to do is it's going to do the same validation um, that we saw before. Check uh, the existence of a dev file. If it's compatible, pull it from the dev file registry and validate that. Uh, and that's really all you have to do because uh, Odeo is doing all the the complex Kubernetes and, and OpenShift um, uh, de- uh, <laughs> processes for us um, with a dev file. And so what we'll do here is we need to have a way to access our um, deployed content. So once we actually push this using the Odeo push command, which I'll talk about in a second, how are we going to access it? Well, routing is super easy, uh, especially with OpenShift. And really all we have to do is create a, a URL with this command. So it's going to automatically generate us a name for our U- URL uh, tag for it for the component weather, which we just created. So now that this is already done, this is really all we have to do before we type in Odeo push. And Odeo push, you know, you're probably thinking of like a git push and you're really not too far off because Odeo push is going to do uh, a lot of different processes in order to get the dev file ready and, and start spinning up, say, like a pod um, and a lot of other Kubernetes resources to get your application from the source code that you already have, uh, use a dev file uh, configuration for it, and actually spin it up in your cluster uh, to be ready to be used. Um, so what it's going to do uh, is it's going to wait for the component to start. Uh, when we looked at that dev file earlier, we saw um, it had a npm install and an npm start and a, a few other commands. Well. We're actually going to be executing those commands right now. Uh, so we can see executing install command to install the dependencies and everything that we need for our node project. Um, and you will see npm start once it's ready for that. So right here, we saw it executed the run command. And literally like that, we have our project running in our uh, OpenShift cluster. And I think it's crazy that we went from project to deployed in so few commands. So Right now, let's take a look at it using the URL that we created earlier. Um, it gave us that automatic name, Weather3000. Sounds like some like invention that someone's going to make one day, uh, to, like AI weather. Um, and let's hop in our browser to actually see what this looks like and see if everything's working properly, because it looks like it's uh, successfully pushed, and we have a pod running in our, um, Kuber, uh, our OpenShift cluster. Um, And so let's access it. So I'm going to share my Chrome real quick, um, and we'll actually be able to see it. So you should be able to see my Chrome, um, and let's paste in that URL that it gave us. There we go. We can see it running right now on the uh, cluster. So of course, the URL is a little bit wonky. Uh, We can fix that later. 
but we have this application running live um, and we can use it to pull data and actually get the weather for our location. So let's type in a city for me uh, and I guess Edson, um, we're, we're both in the 919, which is the area code of uh, Raleigh, um, which is where one of the Red Hat Towers is located at. Um, so it's a great place to be. And let's go ahead and search what the weather is right now. So it looks like we've got heavy rain and humidity throughout the day. And it's currently 24 degrees. Um, it's important to note, this is not Fahrenheit. We would be freezing. I would have more than one t-shirt on if it was Fahrenheit. This is Celsius, of course. But Yep, <laughs> it's cool to it's cool to see that live and in action. Um, but okay, let me put you in a in a perspective. Say we're a developer um, and we need to make some changes to our application. Well, it's already running live, but we want to see that reflected live as well. So I'm going to open up um, my terminal again, and I'm going to run the command called Odeo Watch. And what that's essentially going to do is it's going to keep track of our current directory. Um, and if we make any changes to the code inside of that directory, it's going to automatically redeploy our, um, our entire uh, project uh, using Audio Push, but it's going to do it automatically for us. We don't have to go in there, do anything different. So we'll run the command Audio Watch, and it says waiting for something to change in the current directory where we're at. Um, so let's go ahead and let's hop into Visual Studio, uh, and let's go ahead and make a little change. Um, so I'm going to open up the uh, correct folder for where we are, documents, dev nation, weather, and we've got that weather app right there. So let's hop in that, um, and here we are. So I'm not sure why this is already open, but we've got everything, um, our entire folder right here on the left-hand side. Uh, you know, it's the same folder which we were working on in the terminal, um, but since it's a Java, pro um, a Java uh, Node.js project, I'm sorry, Let's hop in and let's edit something that, you know, could be publicly accessible uh, from that URL that we provided. So the index page, of course, you know, index.html. This is very similar. Uh, this is what's going to be reflected from the front page. Um, of course, you saw the use the site to get your weather right uh, above the button. Let's add in some text. Um, I mean, this is completely random. Uh, Cedric is the best intern. Okay. We've got some text, we've made a change, um, and let's go ahead and save this. I'm not sure how that got there. Um, but since we've made a change in our, our directory that we're working in, uh, Odeo Watch is going to automatically um, do an Odeo push, uh, and it's gonna do everything for us to have those changes reflected um, live on our uh, deployed application. So um, let's wait a second. Um, actually, I'm gonna show you real quick, actually, the terminal, because it's doing some work here right now. As you can see, it is seeing that there was some changes up here at the top um, that we've edited some files, and it's pushing that. It's pushing all the changes. It's doing uh, an npm install and an npm start, doing everything that we did with the ODO push again. And now it's back to waiting for something to change. So that means it's done what it has to do. And let's hop in Google Chrome to the same application, of course, you see with the weird URL. Let's do a refresh. Whoa! <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> that's crazy. So it says Cedric is the best intern. Uh, of course, that's what we did in our um, <laughs> in our application, the changes that we made. And of course, um, if we wanted to see what the weather is at our other Red Hat location, let's type in Boston. Um, we've got some light rain. So the application has been redeployed. The pod has been restarted. Um, it is done the uh, dev file commands that we have put in, um, or were actually, actually auto-generated when we created our dev file. And it's kind of already done that for us. So the audio watch uh, paired with you know a dev file has incredible possibilities. Um, and that's just something, one of the many features I wanted to highlight uh, with audio today, but we've got a lot to cover. Uh, one thing I do wanna um, show is how we can migrate, as I said before on our agenda, a sourced image component with Odeo 1.0 to Odeo 2.0 into a dev file. So what we can do is actually hop out of this uh, weather app, let's hop out of that, and let's create a new folder um, called sourced image, and let's hop into that. And so say if we're working with a Java program, um, of course we can use a Java, um, uh, sorry, dev file component, or we can actually import say OpenJDK, which is uh, gonna be a sourced image component. 
So now that we've imported that from, see if I can go back up here, um, the uh, Red Hat registry, let's go ahead and annotate it. Um, and so we can annotate that to make it accessible for ODO uh, with the builder tag so I can see that, hey, ODO, use this. This is a component that you can use. And now when we do our ODO catalog uh, list, we'll be able to see that if I typed it right. Yep. So you've got our dev file components up here and check that out. We've got uh, OpenJDK just chilling uh, right now in our source to image OpenShift components. And of course it's supported now since we've imported it. Uh, so that's awesome. So that's the OpenJDK uh, component that we'll be working with today. But let's go ahead and import a project. So I've got this OpenShift Evangelist uh, Wild West backend. Um, it's a Java uh, project that is the back end for a front end, but we don't have to get into that right now. We'll just look at uh, the back end right now. Uh, and let's hop in there um, and see what it's look like, what it's looking like. So we've got our source folder, of course, um, which is gonna have all of the um, uh, <laughs> files that we need to compile with Maven. Um, so we can do that right now, actually. Just use Maven package to build the source files and create a jar. And that jar file, uh, the dot jar, is what we're gonna be able to use to create the conf component configuration. So we've got that build success. If we look at the folder again, now we've got a target folder which is gonna have our dot jar. Um, and so we'll hop in and we'll actually create a component with that. So we'll use open JDK uh, 18, of course, uh, call it backend. And let's point to that target um, and use, should be something like wild west dot jar. Um, and that's gonna create our component configuration. So let's run that. Oh, check it out. So uh, Odeo is actually telling us that um, we need to add a source to image flag uh, when we're running this command. So let's go ahead and add that. Um, nothing bad about that. It's just saying, hey, you know, there's dev file options available. We'd prefer you use yet, but you can still continue using your source to image. Uh, you just need to make sure you're using this flag. So we'll validate that. And now that we've got this component configured, uh, this component created, um, we can either do an ODO push and continue with that and deploy that, or we can use a utility uh, that comes with ODO 2.0, and it's called convert uh, to dev file. And what that's going to do is essentially package uh, our component up into a dev file and have that ready for us to use. Um, so as we can see, dev file is available in your current directory. So if we were to hit uh, ls again, we can see a dev file has now been created. So this is awesome. And if we were to take a look at that, we can see that, of course, schema version, metadata, all those uh, simple components that we have, uh, all these properties of a dev file. And then down here, we can actually see the image that we've imported earlier. Um, so everything's coming full circle. Now we have a dev file from um, the uh, configure, the, sorry, the component that we imported. Um, and the, there's some instructions that'll come with doing this command. Uh, of course, you gotta do an audio push. Um, and kind of finish that off. But as far as migrating uh, something from source to image to uh, a dev file, it's simply that easy. Um, and I guess there's uh, a little bit of time that'll take uh, to do that because it's having to create the Kubernetes resources. So we can kind of pause that um, or wait for that. And the last thing I wanna show through this, uh, through this demo is the Minikube and Kubernetes compatibility that is provided uh, with um, ODO. So Edson, do we have time to cover that real quick? Just to make sure. Yeah, we have a, still have a couple of minutes, yeah. All right, sweet. I forgot to set a timer. So awesome. So what we can do is I'm gonna go ahead and start um, my Kubernetes uh, real quick. And I'm gonna share uh, that extra terminal real quick. Um, because I think it's awesome that we now have uh, support official support for um, uh, Kubernetes. Um, and so I kind of just want to show that before we finish off. So we're going to do a mini cube start to start our local uh, Kubernetes cluster. And we're going to wait for that. Um, and the instructions to start uh, or create a component and deploy that uh, on Kubernetes is really similar to OpenShift. There's just uh, small differences, um, which I'm going to cover here in a second, because um, to uh, to define a route and to create that route, we're actually going to have to bring up uh, ingress IP. Um, and if you're interested, there's definitely some resources on odo.dev about 
the ingress and IP and why it's important. Um, but we'll wait for that for one second um, for it to bring it up. And then we'll go ahead and start and create a new project. Um, looks like we're getting an error real quick. Uh, that <laughs> mini cube is paused. So I'm going to do it one more time. Um, and hopefully we'll be able to do it on Minikube before we run out of time here. But we'll wait for that for one second. And as I said again, um, if you're looking at more information about running all of your projects on Minikube, definitely, um, or, or, or Kubernetes in general, definitely head over to odo.dev um, because we have resources that parallel not only OpenShift but also Kubernetes. So we'll just finish up waiting for uh, Minikube to start. And then we'll create a new project. And for this, we're actually going to use, uh, again, a Node.js project. Um, a, lot of, a lot of JavaScript today. Uh, but hopefully, um, that's, that's OK with everyone. Big fan. Um, but of course, we cover Java today as well. So let's just wait for this to finish up. OK, cool. So um, let's go ahead and find our ingress IP. Um, and for us, it's right here. And so that's going to spit it out. Um, but to continue, let's go ahead and do another auto project create. Um, let's, let's pick a new name instead of whether what we had before. Um, mini cube testing. So that's going to create this new project and it's, it's going to have us already in it. Um, and let's, uh, again, list the catalog, um, for all the components that we have available. Cause you're going to notice that it's actually a little bit different than OpenShift. We've actually just got the dev file components and not the open, the open shift components that we had from before. So it's a little bit less, um, but we still have the most important things, Java, Node, Python, uh, for creating our applications. So real quick, um, we're going to hop in that dev nation folder um, and make a new uh, folder called uh, mini. Hop in there. And let's go ahead and clone a, a Node.js example component into that folder. Um, and so this is the same uh, component I, sorry, the same project file I think that we used at the beginning when I was showing you dev files. Um, so from there you can see all of our basic parts of um, a, uh, a node project and we're going to do the ODO create command again. And instead of using the interactive menu, we'll use Node.js and let's give it a name. Uh, let's call it my Node.js. So we're going to validate uh, that we have the dev file, pull it from the registry, um, and now it's almost ready. But when we pulled up the ingress uh, IP earlier, it's for a reason, because when we're creating a URL on Kubernetes, we actually have to define the ingress URL uh, when we create a URL. So we'll do ODO URL create and give it that host flag. Um, and actually, I kind of forgot what the IP was. <laughs> so let's bring that up again. Awesome. So let's create a URL to access our content once it's deployed. Um, and we'll create that. Oh, I might have already done that. Yeah, <laughs> sorry about that. We'll create the uh, URL um, with the host flag. And let's put in our IP, our ingress IP for that. And so there we go. We've created a URL to access our component um, once it's created. And as you can see, uh, when we take a look at the URLs that we have with ODO URL list, it's already created. Um, and that's going to be local on my machine. Um, and then all we have to do is, of course, follow the instructions and do an ODO push. And that's going to deploy our source code for this node project. So comes full circle. You know, whether you're using OpenShift or whether you're using Kubernetes, uh, ODO is a fantastic way to kind of go in and speed up your development process um, and kind of get it running from project uh, to de uh, deployed. Um, and I know that developers like me and developers everywhere around the world and around the DevNation family will kind of appreciate this and hopefully we can save you some time. So again, my name is Cedric Clyburn. I'm so happy to have had the chance to kind of give a brief overview. I wish I could go in more depth uh, about ODO, but uh, thank you so much for your time, for being here. I really appreciate it. If you want to reach out, I just created a Twitter. I'm not really sure how to use it, uh, but it's above there and my GitHub. And stay tuned to the uh, Red Hat Developer Channel and Dev Nation. But yeah, thanks, Edson. Awesome, Cedric. Yeah, if you're a tech person, you should be on Twitter. And uh, if you're watching this, you have the tip. Uh, you can follow Cedric, so he'll be sharing a lot of different technology stuff. 
And uh, Cedric, also, thank you very much for this awesome presentation. Um, I hope we can book you for another session talking about uh, audio deep dive. Yeah, Everything worked perfectly today. And I'm sure also that the OpenShift team agrees that you're the best intern ever. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, we don't have time for questions today. But thank you very much for watching this today. And the DevNation family, give Cedric a huge thank you and a round of applause for this successful presentation. Uh, see you soon you. in our upco in other upcoming DevNation Tech Talks. Bye.